Having our butts handed to us at the start of the game is so commonplace, it's practically tradition. Which is why there's nothing more gleefully empowering than much later on meeting the same baddie that humiliated you early in the game and wiping the floor with them. What you call petty revenge, I call restoring the balance. Time now for a jog down memory lane, reminiscing about those times we totally showed that jerk from the start of the game. <laughs> Good times. Oh, beware spoilers for the following games. Saying that the evil within throws you in at the deep end is an understatement. It'd be more accurate to say it throws you in at the deep end of a pool full of corpses and also you're tied up upside down and also there's a guy in a terrifying mask who wants to kill you. That guy is called the Sadist and this is your first encounter with him at the very start of the game. This is when you're at your most vulnerable, a fact that the Sadist most definitely takes advantage of, menacing you with a chainsaw and with rooms full of spinning blades and, I don't know, what sounds like a small motocross bike? Oh no, it's a chainsaw again. Real original, the sadist. Anyway, the sadist is a recurring enemy, and though you do get to fight him a few times throughout the game, he is a formidable opponent who is to be feared and respected. That is, until he shows up again in The Evil Within 2. This sequence starts out pretty routinely. You're in a corridor and the sadist starts chasing you as per usual. But that's the point at which Sebastian decides that actually, you know what, f*** this guy and kicks a bed at him. Enough of this shit! What follows is a glorious turning of tables as you become the chainsaw wielding monster and teach the sadist a lesson he won't ever forget because he's dead now. <sighs> you. Haha! <sighs> -ha, now I'm in control for about five seconds. Is the evil within, after all. Face your deathless courage, Faith. You've got to tell them! We worked with you! This is a mistake! Step towards the block when we call your name. One at a time! A wise man once wrote, never laugh at live dragons. And that man was J.R.R. Tolkien, so he should know. It's hard not to have a bit of a giggle at Alduin though, the ancient and mighty dragon of untold power who inadvertently saves the life of the person who winds up slaying him. What was that? First row, duh, more like. Boo! Bad. As Skyrim begins, you're a condemned prisoner awaiting death in the southwestern settlement of Helgen, a fortress town best known for hosting imperial executions and in a few moments getting wrecked by a giant effing dragon. There it is again. Did you hear that? Because just as you're in position for the executioner, Alduin swings by and lays waste to the place. What in oblivion is that? What do you see? This terrifying destructive rampage proves nearly as lethal as the headectomy you narrowly escaped. And given how you're a no level scrub without any dragon shout powers, you've no choice but to humiliatingly flee in your now presumably soiled prison uniform. This all changes by the epic finale, however, when you've leveled up so hard you pursue your scaly nemesis into the actual afterlife to battle him with a bunch of legendary heroes. I'll try to hold to your hopeful purpose. Quickly before this encompassing fog once more snares me in the world eater's net. It's here where you save the world from Alduin the World Eater and, more importantly, save face for how you ran away crying the first time you met him. This is achieved by killing him so hard he explodes. <laughs> Tolkien said don't laugh at live dragons. He never said anything about laughing at dead ones. So ha ha in your face, Alduin. Go well, Alice. 
The Jabberwock waits. With Griffin as your partner, you have reason to hope for success. He's the strongest among us. In American McGee's goth retelling of Alice in Wonderland, the Jabberwock is one of your most formidable foes. If that name means nothing to you, it's because the horrifying Jabberwock from Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass was cut from the Disney Alice in Wonderland movie we're all familiar with, probably because it was too scary. Your room was protected and spared, while your family upstairs roasted in an inferno of incredible horror. And that's going some in a film with a queen who likes to behead her gardeners and a bunch of adorable baby oysters that get eaten alive. Early Disney films were freaking terrifying, you guys. With American McGee's version being an even darker interpretation of Wonderland, the Jabberwock was guaranteed an appearance. In the game, Alice, who is basically Wednesday Addams in a summer wardrobe, has an initial scrape with the Jabberwock that you'll likely only narrowly escape. Is it called Wonderland because you'll spend all your time wondering why the hell you came here? Survive his initial attempt to murder you though, and you'll get the final component of the eye star, that component being the Jabberwock's own eyeball. How typical, how foolish you were to think you could overcome your guilt. This means that when he turns up again later in the game to finish the job, you can blast him with his own eye lasers that he was using against you previously. Eat karma, Jabberwock. Even with the eye staff, it's a tough fight, but maybe we can get some tips from Lewis Carroll's original poem about how the Jabberwock was slain. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All right, stuff this, I'm off to game facts. If you played The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you'll remember the Lynels as the jacked centaurs who stamp around Hyrule looking furious about the fact you're alive. Actually get near one early in the game and you'll discover that they're keen to rectify that situation in as grimly efficient a manner as possible. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you're going to restore Divine Beast Varuta, you're going to need to get extremely close to one of these centaur jerks in order to collect the shock arrows you need to advance your quest. And maybe your first instinct is to fight it. For which we commend your bravery and also ask where you would like your funeral flower sent. No, if you're sensible, like us, you instead snuck from tree to tree, picking up shock arrows and hoping that the sound of your stifled, terrified sobbing wasn't loud enough to be heard by the half-ton of nightmare monster wandering around nearby. Of course, by the time you finish Breath of the Wild, things are very different. Now, I've got the Master Sword, the Hylian Shield, some impressive armour and a ton of mashed up bananas. It's payback time, Lionels. Right! Gonna make elixirs out of your parts. Wait, that sounded weird. Still, it's a special kind of satisfaction that comes from absolutely destroying these once formidable beasts in battle. Or, if all of that sounds like too much hassle, just use an ancient arrow and send them through a portal to who knows where. Have fun, centaur idiot. In this case, beating them definitely beats joining them. Terrible conversationalists. When your only ambition in life is to eat fruits and unidentified white pills, you would think that living your modest fruit-eating dreams would be a cinch. Not so if you live trapped in an infinitely looping maze haunted by ghosts that chase and kill you. And that's how Pac-Man is history's first survival horror game. <laughs> 
At the beginning of a go on this arcade classic, the perpetual pill-eater known as the Pac-Man may well be murdered by angry ghosts while he's still finding his feet. I mean, not literally finding his feet, because he has no feet or arms. Real hardcore survival horror stuff, like proper body horror. Nice one, Namco. <laughs> But once Pac-Man has gotten to grips with the looping haunted hell maze that is his prison, he discovers the special, much larger pill that turns the tables on those fearsome phantoms. <laughs> this is where the game changes gear, shifting genres from supernatural horror to a grisly tale of revenge. Watch as our hero, infused with the power of the mysterious power pill, hunts down his enemies and annihilates them with the kind of single-minded vengefulness that Liam Neeson in Taken would consider a bit full-on. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to all of us to be more like Pac-Man. We should all of us face up to our fears and destroy them. <laughs> but not eat pills we find lying on the floor. That's just dicey. Is your main complaint about tanks that they don't have a giant mouth filled with razor sharp teeth? If so, A, what's the matter with you? And B, you'd fit right in with the bad guys from Wolfenstein The New Order. Presumably that was the thinking behind their invention, the Panzerhund a giant robot dog with a virtually impenetrable armoured hide that spends a good portion of the first playable part of Wolfenstein The New Order making your life as difficult as a murderous robot dog can. Which it turns out is quite a lot. Here the Panzerhund is such a formidable enemy that it will kill you instantly if it spots you, and it can only be taken down by sneaking past it and taking control of a downed plane's anti-aircraft cannon. Safe to say, by the time this sequence is over, you're keen to not see another Panzerhund for at least, oh I don't know, 14 years? Which unfortunately is the amount of time you spend in a coma before emerging into a world where the Nazis run everything and have also upgraded their Panzerhunts to be even more deadly. What will they think of next? Please don't tell me. Still, by the time you re-encounter a hunt, you've not only gotten comfortable with blowing away everything unfortunate enough to cross your path, but also with how to wield two gigantic firearms at once, which means this rematch against a panzer hunt is both much shorter and as gratifying as, well, destroying a giant Nazi robot monster would be. If you think that's impressive, wait till you see Wyatt kill one with a game of catch. Should have made a robot cat, Nazis. Those guys won't fetch anything. I don't think he's too <laughs> the Ustanak from Resident Evil 6 is what you get if you cross the Incredible Hulk with a tray of dentistry equipment and has about as good natured as that combination sounds. Your first encounter with this terrifying B.O.W. goes about as well as you'd expect, although you have to commend Jake for his optimism. Oh, Jake, looks like he ate it. What follows is a frantic scramble to not get unsolicited acupuncture from an enraged bioweapon, though Jake still finds time for casual sexism, which is real commitment to the bit. It's always something with women. Haha, <laughs> 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 women, always wanting to not be murdered by monsters. Am I right? The Ustonak then spends the rest of the game tailing Jake and Sherry around the world and refusing to die, despite being crushed by rubble, exploded by helicopters, drilled by giant drills, and electrocuted by an electricity pylon. <laughs> 
but how totally invulnerable the Ustanak seems throughout the entirety of Resident Evil 6's campaign only heightens how hilariously awesome it is when you finally face him down and have a fist fight with him. Die already! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Up yours, Ustanak! Also, why do women always go to the bathroom in pairs? Jake Muller, out! Thank you very much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And before we started filming the video, we said that you guys probably wouldn't watch any more videos of ours. So why don't you show us what idiots we are by clicking on either these videos from us up here or these videos down here from Outside Extra. And the other thing we said was you probably wouldn't subscribe by clicking the subscribe orb. Time to show us.